Have you ever felt like you're just one step away from achieving your dreams, but something invisible is holding you back? Something you can't quite put your finger on? Well, what if I told you that hidden blocks within you could be the only thing standing between you and your deepest desires? Hi, I'm Candice Esposito, and I want to welcome you to the Eclipse Method, a process that will help you uncover and overcome the invisible barriers in your life so that you can speed up your manifestation now. So if you're ready to transform your dreams into reality, you're in the right place. Keep watching to unlock the secret to manifesting your best health and your best life. So there are nine common blocks, often in plain sight, that can slow us down or even stop our progress towards manifesting our deepest desires, including creating our dream health. So first, let's go through each block in turn. I'll explain what each block is. Then I'll share a process for how you can easily identify which block or blocks may be affecting you. And then finally, I'll offer some options in terms of action steps for how to clear to resolve each block in your path. So the first block is being out of alignment with one's higher self. Think of this as making sure everything you do feels right deep down. It's like when you make choices that truly feel good, you're in sync with your real self, your higher self. If you're doing things just because others expect you to, or others have told you to do that thing, or it's what you think you should do or have to do, but it doesn't light you up, it doesn't feel right, not completely, you're probably not aligned with your higher self. So it's important to check in with yourself and make sure your actions reflect what you really want, not just what you think you want. The second block is living without intention. So this one's about doing things on purpose with a real intention or intent behind your actions. Okay, so if you've ever caught yourself zoning out, going through the motions or just doing things because that's how you've always done them, that's living without intention. It's kind of like walking around with your eyes closed. So setting a clear intent or intention for what you want to achieve or how you want to feel each day can totally change the game. It makes your actions more meaningful and directed towards what you really want. You're basically telling the universe, hey, this is what I want, right? With conviction. The third possible block is energetic vibration misalignment. So you may have heard the saying, your vibe attracts your tribe, right? Well, your vibe or vibration also attracts everything else in your life. So if you're feeling down, angry, or just plain negative a lot, it's going to be tough to bring in the good stuff like joy, peace, and abundance. So this block is about getting your energy, your vibration, in tune with your goals. Uplifting your mood and staying positive can make a huge difference in what you attract. Now, I want to be clear that I don't mean you're never going to feel frustration or anger or fear. It's that you're not marinating or stewing in those emotions. That's not your common or average state. Okay, so as part of the human condition, we're all going to experience those emotions. It's if we're processing those And also making the choice, right? Being mindful or uh, setting intention to feel more of the higher frequencies, the higher vibrations, such as joy, peace, happiness, et cetera, okay? The fourth block is suppressed emotions and trauma. This is a really, really common one. I would even argue that all of us are impacted by this one to varying degrees. So 
it's about carrying around old pain or emotional baggage. And it's kind of like walking through life with this heavy backpack on. So you might not even realize it, but it weighs you down. It causes your vibration to be much more dense, much more heavy. Okay, so whether it's something someone said years ago that stuck with you or maybe a more significant trauma, not dealing with the emotions, with the trauma itself that's got stuck in your body can block you from moving forward. So talking about it, writing it out, finding other ways to process and release these emotions, the stuck trauma can feel like taking that heavy backpack off and then it frees you up to be able to bring in what it is that you truly desire to attract those higher frequencies because your energetic blueprint now is not so dense, not so heavy. The fifth block is lack of belief. If you don't believe you can achieve something, you're setting yourself up for a tough ride. So self-doubt, doubting yourself is like trying to drive with the handbrake on. You might move a little, but it's going to be a lot harder than it needs to be. So building up your self-belief through things like affirmations or maybe visualizing your success can help release that handbrake and smooth out the journey towards your goals. You often hear the saying, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, in this case, we actually need to flip that around. I believe it and then I'll see it. The sixth possible block is disconnection from the present. And this is a really, another really common one. And I would argue similar to trauma, this is one that all of us are impacted by to varying degrees. So you ever find yourself zoning out, worrying about the future or regretting the past? Yeah, that's being disconnected from the present. It's like you're not fully here, which means you're not fully available to act on your goals. Your energy is fragmented. Your energy is stuck in the past or it's headed out towards the future. It's not in the present and that's where we manifest. That's where we create our reality. It all happens in the present moment, which is really the only time that actually exists, the past and the future are just illusions, right? So bringing yourself back to the now through mindfulness or just taking a moment to look around and appreciate where you are, anchor yourself back to the present, helps focus your energy where it can actually make a difference and where it can create your reality. The seventh block is attachment to the outcome. So this is about being fixated on how things should work out. So your perceived vision of how things should turn out. I liken this to planning a road trip with every turn mapped out and then freaking out when a road is closed and you have to take a detour. Sometimes the detour leads to the best part of the trip. So it involves the element of trust and faith, trusting that things will work out, even if it's not exactly how you envisioned it to go. And this can take a lot of stress off of you and actually bring you closer to your goals, often in ways you hadn't imagined. Sometimes the universe, God, acts in ways that is like beyond our comprehension, beyond what we could have imagined, and it's just so much better. Block number eight is ignoring your bliss. So if you're not doing things that make you genuinely happy or excited, you're missing out. Follow your excitement, follow your bliss. I liken it to eating only plain toast every day for breakfast when you could have like a full delicious breakfast. So finding and doing more of what lights you up inside not only makes life more enjoyable, but it also puts you in flow, the flow state. And that makes everything else seem to come a little bit easier. Plus, in those moments of joy, that's when the best ideas and opportunities often pop up. We get those downloads, so to speak. 
And block number nine is lack of consistency and discipline. So this one's a little bit more obvious. Essentially, you haven't made whatever it is you desire a non-negotiable in your life. So this is about showing up for your goals regularly, not just when you feel like it. Okay, so imagine trying to grow a plant, but only watering it once in a while whenever you remember. The plant probably isn't going to thrive, right? Same idea here. So consistency is key. Setting small achievable goals and sticking to them, even when it's not super exciting, helps you build momentum and get closer to your bigger dreams. Plus, there is something super satisfying about ticking off those little tasks each day as well. So as we went through each of the blocks, were there one or two, maybe three that resonated with you the most? If so, those are the ones that I encourage you to explore further. They're probably the ones impacting you. Now, if not, if you're not sure, that's okay. If you're having trouble figuring out which block is affecting you, that's what I'm gonna help you with next. So, That's the whole reason that I created the Eclipse Method. And the method isn't just about identifying blocks, it's about actively overcoming them. Because by embracing self-awareness, intention, and consistent action, you will start to see your manifestation come to life faster than ever before. Okay, so let's dive into the Eclipse Method and help you identify your unique blocks to manifestation shadows and there's four key components inside of the eclipse method that we're going to go through the first one is what i call the eclipse navigator so you can think of this as an algorithm Uh, it becomes especially useful if you don't know what your specific blocks are it's um think of it as a flow chart a sequence of questions guiding questions that will help you identify what blocks are affecting you Okay, so um, the instructions are at the bottom here. We want to start with question one. So we just start from the beginning. You want to approach this with a clear mind and open heart and just be honest, be honest with yourself. Your answer to the first question then guides you to either a specific block or the next question. And then you move along through the questions like that in turn. Um, So you want to reflect on any blocks that you've pinpointed. What I would recommend is jotting whatever block down that comes up so that you can reflect on it later. And then also then you're going to take that block and check the cheat sheet, which is component number two for the Eclipse method that we're going to um, go over in a, in a second here. So let's, let's go through this together. Um, then you can take these questions and go through it on your own afterwards. So the first question is, how do I feel about my ability to achieve my goals? If you doubt your ability or you feel unworthy, like you don't feel worthy to receive whatever your desire may be, then consider the lack of belief block okay so if that one uh, applies to you what i would recommend doing is just writing down lack of belief and then you can delve deeper into that in a moment now if you do feel confident but you're still not seeing results then head on to question number two and you can still go to question number two even if you've identified the lack of belief block because you could have more than one block So you could approach it a couple of ways. Like if you just want to grab that first one, work on it, and then go through this process again, you can do it that way. Or if you want to identify all the blocks at once and then go through each of those in turn, you could do it that way too. So question two is, do I enjoy the process towards my goals? Do I enjoy the journey or am I fixated on the outcome? So if you are fixated on the outcome, consider the attachment to outcome block. If you enjoy the process and you're not so obsessed about the outcome or attached to that, but you still feel stuck, proceed to question number three. So question number three is when I think about my goals, do my emotions and energy feel aligned or conflicted? So if they feel 
like they're not aligned, like your energies, you know, how you go about your day, how you're feeling, when you compare that to the frequency and energy of your goals, do they line up or is there a conflict there? If there is a conflict and you're primarily experiencing negative emotions, maybe stewing or marinating in negative emotions most of the time, I would consider the energetic vibration misalignment block. Now, if your emotions and energy feel aligned, but you're still not progressing, proceed to question number four, which is, am I consistently taking action towards my goals? If the answer is no, and you're going to know this, right? Um, We gave the analogy of helping the plant to grow, right? How often are you watering that plant? If not too much or just when you want want to or feel like it, then that's probably um, a block that's impacting you. So consider the lack of consistency and discipline block. If that's not the case, if you are consistent, you are disciplined, you're showing up on a regular basis, then let's move on to question five. So do I feel connected with my present self and actions? Am I spending most of the time in the here and now, in the present moment? So if that's not the case, if you're often dwelling on the past or worrying about the future, then consider the disconnection from the present block. Now, if you are present most of the time, but not fulfilled or excited by your actions, what's coming into your life, move on to question number six. Am I engaging in activities that bring me joy and excitement? Am I in flow state? How often am I in that flow state where I'm doing things that light me up? If that's not the case, if that's not happening on a regular basis, or you're maybe even unsure what brings you joy, consider the ignoring your bliss block. And if you regularly engage in joyful activities, but still feel disconnected from your goals, move on to question seven, which is, do I allow myself to express and feel my emotions fully, or do I suppress them? And what I would add to this one too, is the possibility of trauma that's gotten Uh, stuck in your body so unresolved trauma from the past um, it could be physical mental emotional psychological trauma any of those um, that you just haven't worked through addressed Um, they've, they've gotten stuck along the way so if that's the case if you suppress emotions or you know you have unaddressed pain from the past consider the suppressed emotions and trauma block If you're open with your emotions, maybe you've done a lot of work around trauma, but you're still feeling unaligned with your actions, proceed to question number eight, which is, do my actions and daily practices reflect my true desires and purpose? So if your actions and your daily practices don't line up with what it is that you desire, then consider the alignment with higher self block. It's like your higher self is trying to like drag you along, but you're not following. There's some kind of resistance there. If they do align, but progress is lacking, then consider the living without intentionality intentionality, um, uh, block, which is the last one. Okay, the ninth block. So go through um, all the questions, go through the algorithm, algorithm, starting with question number one, be honest with yourself, Uh, like what have you got to lose, you might as well be honest, and then write down the blocks that come up, even if you're not sure, if you think it's a possibility, again, like what is it going to hurt to work through that or to explore that for yourself. And then once you've done that, you can go to component number two, which is uh, what I call the eclipse blueprint. So you could think of this as kind of like a cheat sheet. So um, we have the blocks that are in the second column here. And the first column outlines what you could be feeling or thinking if that block is affecting you. Okay, so again, we'll go through each one. The, um, the, the big difference with the Eclipse Blueprint from the algorithm or the Eclipse Navigator is that it also provides possible action steps. So some suggestions, some options that you can take and run with so you can actually address the blocks, resolve them, remove them from your path. So if you're feeling disconnected from your true desires or purpose, consider the alignment with higher self. And then if that 
came up in the algorithm that you just went through, um, like if you resonated with that or answered yes to that question, then you would come down here to the cheat sheet and look at the action steps that you could take to help address that alignment with higher self block, which could look like daily meditation, focusing on your inner voice, maybe journaling prompts about your passions and how they align with your actions. You know, this list is by no means exhaustive, but what I've tried to um, include are some of the more common ones and keep it to two in total so that you're not feeling overwhelmed either, that it's clear, concise, and simple. If you feel like you're acting without clear intentions or feeling like you're on autopilot, that would be the living without intentionality block. Okay, living without intention. Uh, so start your day by setting an intention. You could use reminder alarms for mindfulness breaks to anchor yourself back to your intention and just check in with yourself if you are acting from that place versus on autopilot. If you feel like you're experiencing persistent negative emotions or low energy, then you could uh, consider the energetic vibration misalignment block. In that case, things like practicing gratitude on a daily basis, engaging uh, regularly in activities that bring joy can be helpful. If you feel like you're holding on to past hurts or feeling weighed down by old experiences, consider the suppressed emotions or trauma block. There's different options for this, expressive writing about the past, letting that go, therapy sessions focus, focusing on emotional release. One therapy that I love to use in practice is called the Safe and Sound Protocol, which is auditory therapy. There's different ones out there. So part of it too is like what resonates with you the most. There's no right or wrong. Um, if you feel like you're doubting your ability to achieve your goals or dreams, consider the lack of belief block. In that case, you can consider affirmations that are tailored to your goals, repeating them regularly throughout the day, maybe visualizing achieving your goals for five minutes daily. I'll talk about the law of assumption and how that comes into play in a second. But basically, you're visualizing having already accomplished that goal and uh, allow yourself to feel as if that goal has already happened. If you're feeling stuck in the past or overly anxious about the future, consider the disconnection from the present block. In that case, you want to practice mindfulness, grounding exercises, any type of action that's going to anchor you back into the here and now. I have a whole program called the Calm Living Blueprint that does just that. That's what it's all about, addressing anxiety. Um, you could do daily journaling about present moments that you're thankful for. If you feel like you're obsessing over how your goals will be achieved or fe fearing deviation from the plan that's been laid out, consider the attachment to outcome block. In that case, you may wish to reflect on past instances where unexpected paths led to positive outcomes. Like where's the proof that that is not true? Or you could practice letting go through meditation, focusing on trust and openness. If you feel like you're not pursuing activities that bring you joy or excitement, you're not lit up by anything, you know, in your life, consider the ignoring your bliss block and dedicate time in that case each week, maybe on a daily basis to an activity, a hobby that does light you up, that does make you feel alive. Um, it could be uh, keeping a joy journal, noting daily activities that bring you happiness, bringing awareness to that. And finally, if you feel like you're struggling to maintain regular efforts towards your goals, consider the lack of consistency and discipline block. And in that case, you may want to establish small daily habits that align with your goals or use something like a habit tracker to monitor your progress and maintain accountability, like make those desires that you have non-negotiables, okay? So in terms of how you use this cheat sheet, uh, the Eclipse Blueprint, you want to, first of all, reflect on your current state. 
So similar to the navigator, like you take a moment and understand where you're at right now. Like what are the thoughts and emotions that are popping up? And by doing that, you can match what's there to the first column right? What is it that you're thinking and feeling? And that'll give you insight or lead you towards what possible block could be there. And then you identify the block. So once you recognize your feelings or thoughts, look across to understand the block and its possible actions, and then put together a simple plan to address that, to remove that block from your life. So choose one or two actions that resonate most with you um, and just get going. Let's get started is, is the big point when it comes to the action. And, you know, as I said, remember these action steps are suggestions to spark your intuition and personal insight. So feel free to take what you like, leave the rest, modify it, adapt it, um, make it more aligned with your unique journey towards health creation and manifestation. Okay, so that's the Eclipse Blueprint. Think of it as the cheat sheet. So we've gone through the first two components, um, the Eclipse Navigator, which is the algorithm. So if you're really not sure about what possible blocks are affecting you, go through these guiding questions that will lead you to the answers. And then once you've done that, come down to the cheat sheet, the blueprint here, and connect your feelings, your thoughts with the block. Pull those blocks from the guided questions from the navigator and look at them here. And then um, use the third column to come up with ideas around action steps that you can take to resolve and address those blocks. Just the awareness of the block in and of itself is very powerful. Okay, um, and then the third component is um, what I call the eclipse essences. So think of this as a, like a really quick overview, a snapshot of each of the blocks. Okay, so um, it gives you understanding. And if you're not sure about what a block is or how it shows up in one's life, this would be the section where you go and check that out. So as an example, we don't necessarily have to go through each one of them, but as an example, like with the alignment with higher self block, the core essence of that is being in harmony with your true self and purpose. That's really what that block is all about, um, that the fact that that's not happening. And so the importance is that, like, why? Why do you care about this? Why should you care? Well, identifying the block is important because it helps ensure that your actions then reflect your true desires and goals. Okay, because if you're not in alignment, then you're taking these actions um, that are not going to lead you to what it is that you truly desire, that you truly want. And how this one shows up in your life is usually making choices that don't feel right or fulfilling. You make the choice out of uh, because someone else said it was the right thing to do, that you feel that you should or have to. It just doesn't feel right. It's something feels off. And then how do we address that? Well, we reconnect with our inner desires through things like meditation and journaling to ensure that our actions actually match up with our higher self. Okay, so you can go through each of the blocks in a similar way. It has the essence. So one sentence of, uh, you know, telling you exactly what that block is all about. Why is it important? Why should you care about it? How it could be showing up in your life? And then how to, how to address it, how to clear it out. Okay, so there is a snapshot there for each of the nine blocks. Okay, and then the last and fourth component is what I call the assumption accelerator. And you can think of this as like the, the special sauce. It's a catalyst for manifestation, a catalyst for making the eclipse method even that more, uh, much more powerful. And the Assumption Accelerator is about using the law of assumption as our catalyst to manifestation. So at its core, the law of assumption suggests that whatever you firmly believe or assume to be true will manifest in your reality. It's the foundation of the saying, as you believe, so shall it be. But it goes deeper than just belief. Uh, conviction, I think, is a better 
term to capture the essence of the law of assumption. It's about the unspoken convictions that shape our daily experiences. So the power of assumption can be seen in every success story from entrepreneurs who assumed failure was not an option. They just did not buy that, buy into that or believe that. To I've seen this in patients who believed recovery was an inevitable. You hear about people recover from um, illnesses like, say, pancreatic cancer, which we think of as, you know, being terminal. The stories are not anomalies. They're actually evidence of the law of assumption at work. So one thing with this is that it is important to differentiate between hoping for an outcome and assuming one. Okay, so the difference is that hope often carries a sense of uncertainty. It's kind of like wishing for something to happen, but you don't really, it's not, it, the conviction is not there when you're just hoping. Assumption, however, is a confident expectation, a conviction, a belief so strong that its manifestation is inevitable. Okay, so um, the example that I use uh, so, sorry, that's a typo there. But I, the analogy that I use is if you imagine yourself ordering a meal at a restaurant, okay, you place your order with conviction, you tell the waiter or waitress what it is that you want. You're not, you're not doubting what's going to come out of the kitchen, you know, what's going to be served to you. You're not like walking to um, the kitchen and looking over the chef's shoulder, doubting what he or she is making for you. You just expect, you have a confident expectation that what you ordered will be brought to you. And that essentially is the law of assumption. Now, how do we start applying this law? Well, first, you identify a specific goal. So we're talking about health, so it can be a health goal, or really any area of your life that you wish to transform. And then you consciously decide to assume that your desired outcome is guaranteed. It's already happened. So you act, speak, and think as if it's already happening or has already happened. Okay, And so when you start assuming success, you naturally align your actions and thoughts with that success. So it's like if you assume you're a person who wakes up early and hits the gym, pretty soon you're doing just that. So the law of assumption helps you get past the blocks that we just identified by changing how you see those blocks, how you perceive them and yourself. So instead of seeing a block as a stop sign, you see it more as a detour sign guiding you to where you need to go, okay? And the cool thing, the cool thing about the eclipse method when we combine that with the law of assumption in this catalyst is that it's all interconnected. You work on aligning with your higher self, being intentional, managing your vibration, dealing with old baggage and all the other blocks. And you do that from a place of, I'm already there. That is so powerful. It's like you're elevating yourself above the maze so you can see exactly where to go. All right, so don't take my word for it. Test it out for yourself. Try it out. Um, if you'd like a copy of these notes, just comment Eclipse down below this video and I'll send you a copy um, of these notes of the method itself so you can, you know, take this, delve in, uh, into it deeper, go through it for yourself. Um, and then if this is the type of work that you're interested in doing more of, that you'd like some support around, I have a link below this video as well to book a uh, free non-obligation uh, 15 minute chat with me and we can talk about what that would look like to work together uh, and do this type of work to get you to where you want to be to manifest and create the health that you dream about the life that you dream about thanks a lot for watching i'll see you in the next video